In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this interesting looking ball. With a new blend file open, you're going to want to delete everything. We're going to get started with the outside part, so we want to add a cube and then add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to set the viewport and render to 4, and you want to make sure these are exactly the same or else you'll get some weird um, artifacts when rendering. And I'm going to add cast modifier with a factor of 1 so that it turns into a perfect sphere because as you can see when I disable it, it's very cubic. After that, I'm going to add a decimate modifier and you really want to play around with this, but I found a ratio of 0.1 to work very nice. Now, we're going to add a wireframe modifier to get this really interesting result, but um, I'm going to also increase the thickness a bit. Again, you have to play around with this to see what you like. I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier to get this, but it, you see how the holes are very small. You can com combat that by turning on crease edges and slowly decreasing it. You'll see that the lower the value, the more closed they are. For this, I found a value of around 0.3 to work really nice. I'm also going to increase the subdivision surface just to get it a bit nicer looking. We're nearly done. We only have to add one more modifier, which is the collision modifier. You'll see what this is used for later. Now that we've finished our outside part, I'm going to get started with the inside. This is also a subdivided cube, but it's scaled down considerably so that it doesn't touch any of the edges. We also want to increase the viewport and render quality steps to at least six. And again, you want to make sure these are the same or else you'll get some weird render results. Now we can add our cloth simulation as this final result of the puffing effect is actually simulated. Now it's time to set up the simulation. To do this, we're going to go into the physics properties tab and change a couple of settings. The first thing you want to do is increase the quality steps to something around eight. This makes sure that the inside ball when expanding doesn't pass through or intersect with this outside mesh. We can also decrease the speed multiplier again to make sure that nothing weird happens. I'm also going to decrease the vertex mass just to make sure that this ball, because it has so many vertices, doesn't weigh too much. I'm going to decrease the stiffness to something around 0.5, but you might have to change this depending on how you want the simulation to look. Now comes the most important part that makes this whole thing work, the pressure. What this basically does is blow up this mesh from the inside and make it look puffy. I'm going to set it to something like 5 and then insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to move to a frame like 7 or something not too far and increase it to 20 and add another keyframe with I. What this does is slowly increase the pressure so that it doesn't just pop outwards and go through this mesh as that can easily mess up your whole simulation. I'm also going to go to collisions and then increase the quality to something like 5 or 6 again to make sure that it doesn't go through this outer mesh. It's also important to disable under field weights gravity so that the sphere doesn't fall down. Now what we can do is save our project, go to frame 1 and just pl press the space button to play. It's going to take a while because it's fairly high resolution and then we're going to see something happen. The ball basically just expands, but it interacts with this outside to get this weird puffy effect. What you might notice is that there is quite a lot of distance between the two objects. So what you want to do is go into the first the outside part and decrease this inner to something like 0.1 so that it doesn't go through itself, but also the thickness outer, which is the important part, to zero, or basically zero so that it goes as close as possible before actually thinking that it's touching it. You want to do the same thing for the inner part. So you go under collisions, distance, and then you put, go as low as possible. We can now go back to the first frame and see if it looks right. So that's basically what we want. But before we do our final bake, I'm going to increase both of the subdivision surface modifiers just to get a bit more detail. So I'm going to first go to the middle part, again in the modifiers tab, and increase this to 7. It'll look a bit weird because it already has it simulated and it doesn't know how to sub, um, subdivide it, but that's fine because we'll rebake it anyways. Now we're going to do the same thing for the outside part. I'm going to go down to the bottom modifier, which basically um, 
makes this part smoother, and then increase both of them to three. This will make it nice and smooth, but not too high poly so that the simulation still runs fairly fast. Before doing your final bake, you always want to do uh, just quick save it again, and then go to the physics tab on the sphere, go to cache, and then click bake. We don't need the whole thing, so I'll pause it at around frame 10 or 15 with escape. Okay, so 15 frames have been baked and let's see what happens. I'm gonna skip to frame 15 or 14 right away and we can already see it looks really nice and puffy. This is exactly what we wanna see. If you want a bit more puff, you can either try decreasing the uh, stiffness or increasing the pressure a bit more. You'll just have to see what looks better and what works without glitching out and passing through the objects. But now it's time for the shading. First, you probably want to shade smooth your objects just to get them looking nice. I'm going to drag out a new window and set it to the shader editor. Now, with the middle object selected, I'm going to create a new material and call it inside. We want these nice wavy patterns on them to just give it a little bit of color variation, so I'll add a noise texture. I'm also going to add a Voronoi texture and then connect the factor to the scale. With Node Wrangler installed, you can actually control shift click on the Voronoi texture and go into rendered mode to see what how it looks. I'm gonna add a math node and set it to multiply so I can change the scale of it. I'm gonna set the multiply to something like 10 to get this nice wavy texture. And I'm also gonna set the detail here to like 2.5. Because we don't want our object to just look black and white, I'm gonna add a mix RGB node and then set um, put the distance into the factor. Now we're gonna set one of the colors to like a dark green, ye greenish yellow, and then the other one to slightly brighter bluish green. This might look kind of weird because it's emitting the color right now, but if we plug it into the base color and then uh, look at the principled BSDF, you'll see that it gets nice color variation. At this point, you probably also wanna add an HDRI. So you're just gonna go into world settings, click on this um, yellow button, and then environment, open, and then you're gonna open your HDRI. Now we have some nice lighting and you can fine tweak your material. So I might wanna make this slightly darker just so you can see all of these like waves in there. Now that you're happy with the colors, we're gonna add a Fresnel node and then a color ramp. For this, you probably wanna experiment with a couple of different values, but I found 1.6 as an IOR to work really well. And then I'm gonna flip the color ramp and put the drag this all the way down. Now you can see that it basically just isolates the object, uh, the parts of the object that are very at a flat angle from the camera. I'm going to use this to drive the roughness, but if you look at it now, you're going to see that the, um, everything that's facing towards the camera is very, very rough, and everything that's flat is super shiny. What I'm going to do is decrease the value of the white, because as you can see, the white is what's facing towards the camera directly, and the whiter something is, the higher the brightness, and the brightness is basically what controls the roughness, because the roughness of one means that it's has very little reflection and zero has is super reflective. So I'm gonna just take this down to something like 0.5 or 0.3 and then look at it again. Now you can see that although there is less reflection directly towards the camera, there's still some and it makes it look nice and slimy. Now we can get started with the material for the outside. I'm gonna create a new material and call it outside. This one is much simpler as it basically just involves putting the transmission to one, put it, pulling the roughness down to something like 0.1 or 0.2, and then changing the base color to something blue. I like these nice and bright colors as it make, really makes your image pop. I'm also gonna add a noise texture with a bump node just to make it have some extra variation. 
So I'm going to put the normal into the normal and the factor into the height. This is going to look very extreme, so I'm going to take the strength down to something like 0.1. Looking at the noise texture with the node wrangler and control shift um, left click, we're going to bring up the scale to something like 25. Now you can see that it looks really interesting, but it's, there's quite a lot of detail. So I'll take it down to get this really nice and wavy pattern. If we look at the object now, it looks really nice and has this glass material. Now we're basically finished with the scene. What I like to do is go into the world setting in the shader editor duplicate the background and set it to black then add a mix shader and connect both of them and with a light path node i'm going to use the camera is camera ray output connected to the factor what this basically does is that it makes your objects interact with your hdri but the camera only sees a black background so you still get these nice reflections and lighting but the background is nice and black i'm going to add a camera now the scene is done. I'm just going to add a camera and make the sphere fill up the frame. Personally, I'm not going to add any other lights because I like the reflections of the HDRI and the nice and smooth lighting. Now you can click render. And that's it. That's how you make this interesting ball. Of course, you can change the settings and make it look puffier or have bigger holes, change the colors, do whatever you want. I'll have some examples on the screen so you can get inspired. See ya.